greetings. Here we've got a pair of travel adapters picked up from Amazon. One is for when you're visiting Europe. The other is for when you're visiting your gran or India. First is this M. Cyan missing, mishing, machine. Let's go with machine. First is this machine travel adapter. There are a few different models available. This one goes from a European type F Shuko plug to a pair of UK 13 amp sockets and three USB ports. And if you flip it over, a pair of two pin sockets that will take two pin type C Euro plugs, UK shaver plugs, or a type A US or Japanese plug as well. Although the item being plugged in will need to be rated for 230 volts or it's gonna go bang. Plugging in this Lenovo charger shows that they've got really good grip on type A plugs, even without retaining holes on the pins which is just as well as they're on the bottom end and the weight of the adapter or its cable is going to try and pull them out. It's certainly on a par with this Livia adapter I usually use with it. And certainly better than this master plug one, which I don't. Two pin type C are a looser fit, although that may be because I have tried it with the UK shaver plug and that may have weakened their grip as a result. That certainly holds in firmly. Saying that, though the Livia adapter is pretty lousy at holding Euro plugs and this is where the master plug one comes into its own as it's a much firmer fit. The three pin sockets on the front are pretty good. They're a, they're a firm hold. The shutters work and I've tested them with a Q-Check tester and they're correctly wired as well. That leaves the three USB ports on the top. Now the back of the adapter does say that they're rated at 2.4 amps maximum. The Amazon listing says that's per port. Let's see. This power meter, which you can't see the display of at the moment, is measuring the consumption of the whole charger. And this little USB tester is measuring the current and voltage of one of the outputs. As you can see, the iPad will only draw one amp, even though it'll draw one and a half if I use the same cable in an iPad charger. This Samsung tablet will draw one and a half though. And so will this Sony phone, if it feels like it. With the iPad and the Samsung tablet connected together, we're drawing Probably around about the two and a half amp mark on this now. And we're pulling 15.1 watts off the mains. And the output voltage is actually 5.02 volts on the, uh, on the reader. But if I put in this phone as well, you see the power consumption is actually dropping. And the voltage output has now gone to around four and a half volts. So that's definitely not 2.4 amps per output, and it seems to be relying on the devices plugged in adjusting their own power draw when the voltage sags. Anyway, let's take a look inside. Now what looks like a random choice of thick and thin wires here isn't. The thick wires are coming in here and they're coming from the socket at the back. These thin wires are for the USB charger. there. And while we're in here let's take a look and see what the deal is with these contacts. Yeah I think I forced these open with the um, with the jack with the, um, the shaver adapter. They're probably a much better fit before you attack them with that. Pop them back in while they still fit. That's something I hadn't spotted. The bottom connections are also shuttered. Here's a close-up of that USB power board. There's no photo of the underside as there's only a few tracks on it. It certainly looks safer than the counterfeit Apple chargers doing the rounds. 
Having traced the schematic out for it, it begs the question though, what's going on with R9? That's the resistor for the front indicator LED. But it's 33K, so it's not, what's it going to pass? What, 0.1 milliamps? Have they got R8 and R9 the wrong way around? But all in all, not a bad little travel adapter, and cheap enough that you wouldn't miss it if you went on holiday and left it in the hotel room by mistake. Not the fastest at charging though, not with only 2.4 amps total available. Or you can do what I do and roll your own. This is a heavy duty cable with a Shuko plug at one end that came with a UPS. Chop the IC connector off the other end, wire in an ordinary power strip, job done. Next up is the Indian one. And this has two USB ports and one USB-C port. This is a Type D plug, which is the equivalent of the old BS546 5 amp plugs previously used in the UK and rated at 6 amps in India. For comparison, this is a Type M plug rated at 16 amps in India and the equivalent of our old 15 amp plugs in the UK. Those are used for higher current stuff. I'll be testing it in this old 5 amp socket which has been sitting on my workshop wall disconnected for the last 20 years until I unscrewed it last week. Interestingly, it does say 13 amps that it's rated for on the back, even though this is only a 6 amp plug. There's a definite difference in build quality between this and the machine one, and it's evident as soon as you try putting a plug in. Although it is getting easier now, the shape of the shutter mechanism is slightly different, so it's much harder to get a plug in. And it tends to leave bits of itself on the earth pin when you do. Like the machine one, it's got really good grip on type A plugs. Really good grip. It's also got good grip on type C Euro plugs. Once again, if it has had a UK shaver plug inserted, it does loosen its grip somewhat. It's still a reasonably good grip, but it does, it's definitely, you can tell. So if you're going to use a UK shaver plug with its thicker pins, pick a side and stick to it. Now with this different setup for the USB ports, it'll be interesting to see what it can handle, as the item description contradicts itself. It can't be a 32 watt charger if the total output is limited to 3.4 amps, as at 5 volts that's only 17 watts. Let's load it up. First up we've got an iPad and straight away we can see a difference between this and the machine one because it's not capping itself at 1 amp, it is actually prepared to draw more. That's a Sony Xperia L1 plugged into the USB-C port, that's happily pulling 1.4 amps which is pretty much what it wants as well. And if I plug the lamp in from my magnifier into the spare port, it'll happily now deliver, what's that, about 3.7 amps. And if I run the magnifier in full power mode though, you can see it's started to throttle back. The voltage has dropped, everything's dropped its power consumption and the, power, the overall wattage has started to drop a bit. I'll, I'll take that back off and it's now gone up. So that's 2.36. What it was trying to pull was three on the dot. And this is the same configuration with the lamp running on this one instead. So if it tries to draw 4.3 amps or so, it gets throttled down. But it can handle, as you can see, it can handle 3.7. There's definitely not a 32 watt charger. So definitely a different charging circuit and something that the Apple stuff is happier with. So let's take a look inside. Here's what's inside. Not much to see as the socket assembly is behind another plastic cover. Although I've taken one of the shutter mechanisms off so you can see the contacts inside. Um, that neutral wire for the USB module is pinched. Uh, that's because I've already opened this once before and I forgot to film it. So uh, that was pinched for me putting the thing back on, so I've rerouted that now. But you can see there's the USB module at the, at the top. And once again, there is quite a bit of separation between the primary and secondary sections. Here's a close-up of the USB module. 
There's a lot more going on in here than the other one. There's an IC by the USB ports, and what you can't see is another identical IC on the board carrying the USB-C port. There's a longer cut through the board for increased creepage distance between the high and the low voltage, and the transformer has its secondary winding terminating on an extended portion of the base. I've not come across this before, though I have seen transformers where the secondary just comes out on flying leads that solder straight to the board instead of going through pins. Either method can increase the separation between the high and low sides. And here's the schematic. The primary switching chip and the secondary rectifier chip I could find some bits of info on AliExpress. The N323 chips on the other hand, the ones on the USB ports, I couldn't find. But there are a few other ICs with the same package and seemingly the same pinout, which support several different charge ID schemes, and that explains why the iPad was able to detect the device as a fast charger and not just throttle back to one amp like the other one did. So there you go, two travel adapters, both showing that it's possible to put a half decent charger inside when you're not busy trying to counterfeit the big brands. In my opinion, the only thing that lets down the Aodeng is the shutter, which will hopefully wear itself into better operation over time. Anyway, thanks for watching.